my burden down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, everyone in the building, please stand. Amen. Hallelujah. We're in for a treat. Hallelujah. One of our very own. Amen. Y'all help me welcome our minister of music. Now, he's going to be preaching. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Brother Isaac. Amen. Hallelujah. Say preach, Brother Isaac. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to see so many faces out tonight on a Sunday night. I'm glad to be here. Thank you all for coming. Um, I think it's going to work. I hope it works. Jesus' name. So, um, I'd like to give honor to the pastor and the uh, first lady. I would also like to thank um, my friend KC for coming tonight. He surprised me, y'all. Um, <laughs> he surprised me. Um, Thank him for that. You know, you have those friends that kind of always there for you, that kind of always shows up whether you want them to or not, whether you know about it or not, they're just always there through thick and thin. You know, he's just one of them guys, you know, near and dear to my heart. I appreciate that. Um, without further ado, can I get everybody to turn to Genesis 5 and 24? <laughs> I would also like to acknowledge my wife. Kalinthia Isaac. <laughs> Pastor's trying to keep me from getting in trouble. Thank yes. you, sir. I do, um, I do, I am very grateful for my family because without them, you know, life is already tough. It'd be a lot harder without them. Without them always supporting, and always daddy, 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 always, you know, that constant, you know, need. And not just need because they want something from you, but the genuine, unconditional love of a child is it's really amazing. Um, it's really amazing. Can everybody say amen if they got Genesis 5 and 24? Genesis 5 and 24. So there's a running joke that I don't say much. Um, <laughs> so you're going to really find out how I don't talk tonight. I said I'll be the best pastor around. I get up here, read my scripture, pray, and we go home. That's it. <laughs> now, <Nah. laughs> yeah, Pastor, like, that ain't happening. <laughs> anyway, Genesis 5 and 24. Very short scripture. It says, Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. Again, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. All heads bowed. Lord God, as we come to right now, Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We give you, Lord, all the honor and the glory, Jesus, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God. Not that you would show up, Lord God, because we know you're here, Jesus, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, that you will use us, Jesus, Lord God, that you will open our hearts and our minds, Jesus, Lord God. Open us up, Jesus, Lord God, to receive your word, Jesus, Lord God. Open us up, Jesus, Lord God, to hear, Lord God, and apply, Lord God. Whatever it is that you want to show us, Lord God, let us take ourselves off the table, Jesus, Lord God, and add you, Jesus, Lord God. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Enoch walked with God. As I was reading the scriptures and I was thinking and I was pondering, my mind started to go about today's society, what things look like today in the world. And it seems like no matter where we are in life, no matter the riches, no matter how much money we have, no matter if we don't have no money, it could be any walk in life from the time you're young to the time you're old. And it, it just feels like, as I watch media, that there's always something missing. There's always something missing. You can be rich. You can have all the money in the world. 
and they still committing suicide and they still not happy. They still ended up in divorce. They still just trying to grasp that one thing. Oh, if I can go back and I can make one more dollar. And if I'm a millionaire, if I can be a, a multimillionaire, if I'm a multimillionaire, I can be a billionaire and then I have it together. Even if you're poor, if you don't have money, you say the same thing. If I can just make it to here, to this point, to where I'm stable, to where I can take care of my family, to where I can just go out and get a meal with my family, anything, but there's still something missing. You can be middle class, right? You can not be rich and you can not be broke, but there's still something missing. Whether it's in your relationship, whether it's in your finances, whatever it is, there's always that constant, I gotta have it. There's something else that I'm reaching for, I'm trying to pull it down, but I don't know really what it is. What is that thing that eludes us that so many people strive to have, but less few people have? Few people ever receive that. What is that thing that's missing? Think about that. What is that thing? Because everybody has that thing. Everybody's longing for something, whether it's more degrees. Whatever it is, it's something. Like a hole in your heart that's, 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 that's there. You don't know what it is. You feel it, but you can't feel it. You feel it physically, but you can't fill it up. It's just that absence of something. Yes. What is that thing? What what is that? So I would like to wager, I would like to say maybe, maybe that thing is a walk with Christ. Maybe that thing is a walk with Jesus. I was reading this book, um, and it's got a funny title. It's called The Art of Having It All. The art of having all, everything you ever wanted. And he has four categories. He has the body, right? So you work out, you get fit, you feel good about yourself, right? He has being, we'll come back to that. He has balance, that's like with your wife and your kids, right? Just, just all encompassing, just balance, don't spend too much time over here. Just a, a nice balance of things. And he has business, you know, make you financially successful. Right, to give you money, put your money in your pocket so you can almost do what you want to do. But the one thing that stuck out to me that he added was being. And in that term, he's talking about your spiritual being, your spirituality. So how many people know what is, what is, what is, how do I phrase this question? Who are you spiritually? Who are you spiritually? What do you believe in? Do you believe in one God? Do you believe in five gods? Do you believe it's the universe taking care of you? What do you believe? Right? Do you believe in Zeus and Hades? What, what do you believe? What, who am I spiritually? Right? Someone asked me, hey, who are you spiritually? What, what answer would you give them? Who do you serve? How do you serve? Right? And I think the answer to that question goes back to the answer to my first question. All of that comes from and will be cured or will be mitigated by your walk with God, right? Your walk with Jesus. So I titled this lesson tonight, Journey with Jesus. And when I was thinking about a journey, right, I thought about a road trip. I kind of go to North Carolina back and forth a couple of times a year, and it's a long trip. So I'm thinking about it, I said, what, what do I do on a road trip to prepare Right. So the first thing I got to decide that I am going on a trip. Amen. Right. So you have to physically, mentally decide, hey, I'm going to take this journey. I'm going to take this trip. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to walk with him. So that's the first step. You have to decide in your mind. Right. Next thing you have to do is you have to start a travel fund. You have to have the money to take the trip, right? You have to have funds to go buy what you want, right? So I would say to that, invest in God, right? Invest in God, Second Timothy. It says study to show yourself approved, right? So if you got to invest in the things we want to do in this world, going somewhere, if we have a journey, let's invest in God. Next thing is we have to stick to the budget. How many people out there took a trip and they spent too much money? <laughs> got back. Couldn't do nothing for about a two, three weeks till you got paid again. It spent all the money, right? We have to stick to a budget. 
So because of the way the world is, right, we can't afford to go off course. We can't afford to stray because we might not make it back. So we have to stick to the budget. We have to keep our mind, right, focused on God. Matthew talks about um, narrow is the way. Right now is the way. So we got to we got to stay in line and we got to, you know, we might have a curve here and a curve there, but we got to stay straight. It's, it's narrow. It's not broad. Broad. Anybody can do it. Right. But that's not what this is. Right. It's narrow is the way. Number three, we have to find out which routes to take. We have to know what roads we're going to carry. With Jesus, this one is easy. Right. This one is easy because you don't have to think about it. All you have to do is follow him. Plain and simple. You have to follow Jesus. He leads me down the paths of righteousness. So we don't have to go out and plan a road. Oh, Lord, you know, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go right at this corner. No, just follow God. He will, he will direct your path. Right. Next thing, you inspect your engine. We have to do self-evaluation. Self-evaluation. Second Corinthians, examine yourself to know if you're in the faith. Self-evaluation. There's another scripture that says, man looketh in the mirror, and he thinketh that he do right. He needs to examine himself. Right? So inspect your engine. Examine yourself. Number five, pack smart and keep your car clean. Our body is the temple of God. Yeah. We have to watch what we put in it. Our eyes, our ears, right? Everything that comes into the body is not good. So if we want to keep our car, our temple, our body clean, right, we have to make sure that we're not putting in filth. There's an old saying, trash in, trash out. Everybody heard that before? Trash in, trash out. That's right. So all these are just little tips. So I'm going to get to the main points. Um, because the reality of the matter is, you take a road trip, after the trip is over, a couple of years, you're not going to say, hey, um, you remember that road trip? I remember we didn't run out of gas. <laughs> Come on, who says that, right? No, nobody thinks about that, right? But what matters is who you're with when you're on a trip. The experiences that you go through when you're there. Right. And the experiences you go through that will equal your testimonies. Right. And who you're with, who you want to go on the trip with. And what's the purpose of a trip? My friends do trips all the time and they don't do nothing but get to know each other. It says Enoch walked with God. What does it mean to walk with somebody? Right. It didn't say Enoch came over here and prayed when he needed help. He didn't say, you know, on Sundays, Enoch came over here and he worshiped, right? He said he walked with God. What does that mean? That means he continually walked with God. So wherever God went, wherever Enoch went, they were walking together, right? They were together, walking together, learning each other, talking, conversating, right? When you're on a road trip or you on a journey with somebody, right, do you say, hey, how you doing? Good. That's great. Okay. No. Right? You have a conversation. How is your day going? This is what happened. This is what's going on. That's the same thing we need to do with God. We need to talk to him. Right? We need to tell him what's going on in our lives. And God will respond. God will respond. Right? Let's think about some of the um, Noah. Let's think about Noah. Right? How did Noah know to build a boat? There was a, there was a communication. If you don't have a relationship, if you can't talk to them, how are they going to tell you how to do anything? Come on, there was a communication. Right? And, and it's just, it's kind of funny to me, right? All these things happen in the Bible. We were just talking about Noah, right? He built the ark. The world flooded. Him and his family were saved and the animals, obviously. And then what happens? A few years later, people back to the same old thing. Like they forgot what just happened. Like you forgot that the world was just covered with water, right? Like you didn't hear the stories. We didn't forget. We know the story today. Somebody's telling the story. 
But what's the difference? Right? What's the difference? What makes me stay with God? Or what makes me leave, right? What makes me hear the story and say, oh, that's a fairy tale. Or, oh, that'll never happen to me. What about your relationship? What about your communication with God? Because that's what's going to keep you. Him being beside you, that's what keeps you here. It's nothing else. You can tell somebody stories all day long. But until they have their own testimony, until they go through their own thing, guess what? It's going to just... Right off the shoulder, go right over the head. You can tell them to their blue in the face. Think about your children. and talk to them all day long. But until they experience some things, then they'll come around. That experience, those testimonies. Yes, sir. I look like, um, I look at Shatrack, uh, Meshach in a bit ago. Do you think they woke up it was like, um, Shatrack said to Meshach, hey, Meshach, yeah. Hey, you want to serve God today? I don't know. Abednego, what do you think? Yeah, let's go serve God. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? I got a good idea. Let's go get ourselves sacrificed. Nobody does that. Come on, right? You have to have a continued relationship with God, right? So when the king gives the order, nobody worship anybody, or excuse me, when the trumpet sounds and the music is played, everybody needs to bow down and worship me, right? Now they say, hey, you know what? I got a relationship with God. My God told me not to put no other God before him. My God told me that there's no other God but him. So when that music plays and the trumpet sound, I'm not going to bow a knee or my head to anybody else. I'm not a part of that. Like, that's not something that I'm going to do, right? So king, do what you have to do to me. And they said, hey, if I perish, I perish. If God saves me, then he saves me. If he doesn't, then he doesn't. It was so hot in that furnace that the people that threw them in got burnt. Come on. You mean I got to throw these people in and I'm going to lose my life? It is that hot in that fire? Who reminds me of another place, don't it? It reminds, it reminds me of another place. But they got in there, and then after a while, everybody knows the story. I don't have to go into details. But after a while, they said, didn't we throw three people? Three? Well, it looks like there's four in there. And one of them looks like the Son of God. They had a relationship. It wasn't spur in a moment. It wasn't something they thought about. Right? It wasn't something that just popped up. It was a continued walk with Jesus. It was a continued journey with God. So when I think about the journey, right, I, I don't see a straight line. I just don't. I just don't. When I say I'm going on a journey, I don't see a great straight line. When I get in my car and drive, it's just not a straight road. Right? What is, what is in the journey? There's hills. There's valleys. There's mountains, right? There's curves, <laughs> curves. Come on, y'all. There's, there's stuff that you have to go through yeah. when you walk and when you travel with Jesus. Yeah. But guess what? That's good. He will be with you the whole way. Yeah. So I'm not going to say you're not going to mess up if you walk with Jesus. I'm not going to say that nothing bad will ever happen. That's not what I'm up here saying. But I am saying when the mountain's too high, when the valley's too low, right? When you can't take a curve because your car is messing up and you kind of shaky and you had a bad night or you had a bad week at work and, and the car just want to accelerate. Anybody been in the car and just want to accelerate, trying to push you on the gas, it's just going slow, you don't know what's going on? Sometimes life is like that. Sometimes we like that. We can't get up and say every single day is going to be the best day of my life. That's one of Christmas shows. Best day ever. She watching on the best day ever. Every day is the best day ever. Right? As adults, we know that's not true. But at the same time, we do have God. And with God on our side, every day could be the best day ever. Every day could be the best day ever. Because we got God. Right. The Bible also says nobody, nobody can pluck you out of my hands. So when you hit your valleys and the curves and everything is going on and stuff is messing up. There's nothing the enemy can do. 
This is another scripture. Let me go to, um, let's go Romans 8. Nothing can pluck you out of the hands of God. Let's do Romans 8, 35. Let's see. Yes. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? Come on, who? With God with you, who can separate you from his love? Right? Nothing can happen that can ever take you off your journey with Jesus. 38 says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on, y'all. This man was persuaded. He said, I fully believe with everything in me that none of these things can separate me from Jesus. Yeah. None of these things. I don't care what it is. Everybody scared of death. Everybody get under the deathbed. He said, not even death. And that's why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? They wasn't scared to go on the fire because they knew once they walk with Jesus, even in death, they was going to be with Jesus. It didn't matter. I used to joke around when, when I first found the Lord and I started studying heavily. And someone asked me about going to hell. And I don't know where it came from, but I was like, honestly, like, that's not even the goal. That's not what the intent is. Like, I can go to hell as long as Jesus come with me. As long as he's with me, I don't care where we go. Because can't nothing hurt me. Can't nothing touch me with Jesus around. It doesn't matter. Right? You know, we serve God or we come to church for different reasons. I think Pastor said it this morning because we don't want to go to because we want to go to heaven. Yeah, that's a good reason to get started. But after a while, yeah. after you start walking with Jesus, right, you develop that relationship, yeah. right? And then it's not about heaven or hell. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Um, I forget his name. Wrote a song one time. As long as you're there, he said, "I don't need Peter." I don't need Paul. I don't need nothing at all. As long as you're there, Lord. I mean, isn't that powerful? But how do you get there? You have to have that walk with Jesus. You have to make that conscious effort. Hey, Lord, I know I'm not right. I know I'm undeserving. I know it, Jesus. But Lord, I want to change. I want to do better. If I can just walk with you. The lady said with the issue of blood, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Just a little touch. It doesn't have to be much. I don't have to be rich. I don't have to have all these things. But if I can just walk with Jesus, I know I will be all right. I just know I'll be okay. Because there's no principalities, nothing in the world that can separate me from the love of God. And I don't want to take that back, but I will tell you today, in closing, there's one thing, there's one thing that can separate you from Jesus. There's one thing. If you notice, when we read this thing, the only thing that I can, can't fit into that list is yourself. That's the only thing. You're the only one that can make the decision not to serve God. You're the only one that can make that decision. You're the only one. And, it, and it's, it's funny because that's what God gave us. And that's the main thing because he gave us that choice and he gave us that option. And we can decide not to serve him. But why would we? We can decide that, you know what, Jesus, I want to go another way. I see these things and I hear you and I feel you calling me. But, Lord, I'm, I'm not ready for that, Lord. 
we can make those decisions. That's what the rich man did. Jesus said, give up everything you have. Sell it and follow me. That's the only thing you lack in it. You can be with me forever. And he said, sadly, just sadly walked away. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the one that could have, that should have. I don't want to get to the gates. And the Lord says, depart from me, for I never knew you. But God, I spent my whole life in church. I prayed, Lord. I testified. I preached. Depart from me, for I never knew you. I never knew you. Never. Now that I forgot about you, I never knew you. Never knew you. Can we stand to our feet tonight? Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we make up in our minds and our hearts that we are the only thing that's keeping us from our journey with God? We're the only thing that's separating us from where we want to be with Jesus. There's nothing else holding us back. Because everything else, he says, Son, I got you. Don't worry about that. Daughter, I got you. Don't worry about that. You just have to make up in your mind to follow me, to walk with me. And if you decide to walk with me, I will walk with you. And I will be there through whatever you're going through. It doesn't matter. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be there every time you need me. Every time you need me, I will be there. Yeah. Every, time. Every time. Without doubt. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands, Lord. I will be there for you. Just walk with me. Just walk with me. The Lord says walk with me. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Come on, lift those hands and just begin to praise him. said that the enemy